Jeff here and welcome to my channel where we explore innovations in tech. Today we're going to be looking at one of the most fascinating new tools in Adobe Photoshop called Generative Fill. In this video, we'll learn what Adobe is using to create this tool and I'll show you how to use it, what it does well, and what it doesn't. So let's dive right in. So first for some background. The new generative fill tool is powered by Firefly, which is Adobe's family of AI models. Adobe is utilizing generative AI, which is a type of artificial intelligence that creates something new and unique. According to Adobe, their models are trained on hundreds of millions of images sourced from Adobe stock images, openly licensed content, and public domain content where copyright has expired. It takes all these, learns patterns, and produces new images based on its dataset. To get the generative fill text prompt, you will first have to make a selection, which can be done with any of the selection tools. Once you have your selection, either right click on the selection and click Generative Fill, or go to the menu bar, Edit and Generative Fill. When you get the Generative Fill text prompt, you will have two options. The first option is to type in exactly what you want to see, such as snowy mountains or an Australian shepherd dog running. Click the Generate button and the AI will start doing its work. According to Adobe, for best results, we should be using descriptive nouns and adjectives in text prompts instead of instructive prompts like fill the area or create a scene. Once the fill is completed, you will see your selection filled. Each time that you run Generative Fill, it'll give you three different variations. You can keep the same selection or revise the text and have it generate additional variations. The second option is to leave the text prompt blank, which will have the tool remove an object in your selection by filling based on the surrounding in your image. Each generative fill is a layer mask that can be edited. To generate objects, simply describe what you want to see. Let's say we want to add an open laptop sitting on the desk. Next, let's add a pencil holder. Some modern art for the back wall. And then a smartphone on the desk. To generate an entirely new background with your subject unchanged, we'll need to select the background only. We can do this by going to Select, Subject, then choose Select, Inverse to get the selection of just the background. Next, type the background you want. Let's say we want a desert oasis. For extending images, use the crop tool to extend your canvas in any direction, then make your selection on the extra area. Here we're going to leave the text prompt blank and generate. The AI will determine the fill based on the surrounding image. And don't forget to check the additional variations. Removing objects is as simple as selecting your object and leaving the generative fill text box prompt blank. The selection will be filled based on the surrounding in your image. As you've seen in some of the examples already, generative fill won't always produce a picture-perfect result. 
The most obvious challenge it has is generating objects that have a specific angle, movement, position, or is just too unique. To write an effective text prompt, use three to eight words that include a subject and descriptors. Don't worry about adding commands like add or remove. Instead, just write what you want to see. Avoid making a tight selection and always overlap some areas around the selection in your image to generate a better resultant image and enable seamless blending. Make a selection that has enough pixels to extend your image. For example, if you are thinking of extending a half body shot to a full body, make sure you're giving the fill selection enough room to generate that. Looking into the details of the Generative AI user guidelines, Adobe does not want you to be using this for not safe for work material, falsified or misleading information, or violation of copyrights. Adobe's Generative AI is guided by their AI ethics principles of accountability, responsibility, and transparency. Basically, Adobe is ensuring their AI is doing good versus harm for the community. So in summary, we've learned what the Generative Fill tool does, how Adobe is powering it with Generative AI, and the best applications and limitations of the tool. If you want to try out this tool for yourself, there are two ways. The first option is by downloading Photoshop via the Adobe Creative Cloud. The tool is available starting from Photoshop 24.6 Beta. The tool requires cloud processing, so you will need to be connected to the internet. The second option is to try it in browser via their website at firefly.adobe.com. So we've already seen AI art like Midjourney blow everyone's mind. Adobe has taken that AI and married it with its software to produce an integrative and professional tool experience, which is really a great evolution of their software. Adobe has taken the extra step to ensure their tool and AI have integrity with their ethics and responsibility principles, since AI has been so controversial. I feel like there's a lot more innovation to come and we're barely just seeing what's possible. With time and feedback from the community, this tool and AI can only get better. So we'll just have to wait and see. So what did you guys think of the generative fill tool? Comment down below. If you found this video helpful or would like to see an update on this tool in the future, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos exploring innovations in tech. I'm Jeff and see you in the next video.